Hi there. Both Ohio and Michigan are seeing changes in policy when it comes to marijuana use. While experts say there are health benefits, there can also be some drawbacks. We're going to break down the data in our big story today. The Ohio Medical Board has added one more medical condition to the list of those that can be legally treated with medical marijuana. But it also rejected two others. The board added irritable bowel syndrome to the list of 26 qualifying conditions. The board members rejected peti petitions to add obsessive compulsive disorder and autism. It is the fourth time since 2019 that they've rejected a proposal to allow medical marijuana to treat autism. Supporters say they will keep trying. We just think it makes sense. It's, it's such a small percentage of the population that can benefit from this. And we're not sure why the state medical board continually denies parents of children with autism and adults with autism access to this alternative medicine. The legislature can choose to act and add autism or other conditions to the list. The House approved adding it last year, but the proposal failed in the Senate. But access to the drug could soon become easier. A vote to legalize marijuana could be on the ballot in Ohio's November elections. Earlier this month, advocacy groups submitted more than 220,000 signatures in an attempt to get it on the ballot. The ballot issue would create a framework for legalization, regulation, and taxation of cannabis use for Ohio adults. The signatures are now in the process of verification to see if there are enough valid signatures to get on that ballot. That process is expected to be completed by the end of August. While marijuana is a controlled substance under federal law, laws across and around that drug use can vary widely across the country by state. Ohio is one of 15 states that only allows marijuana for medical purposes. And by comparison, you can see here 24 states, including Michigan, allow marijuana for both medicinal and recreational purposes. 12 states, including Indiana, do not allow marijuana use for either medical or recreational purposes. Meanwhile, people looking for a job with the state of Michigan will not have to get a drug test for marijuana before they're hired. The Michigan Civil Service Commission did away with its long-standing rule earlier this week. WILX reporter Riley Connell has more. When it comes to working for the state, a positive drug test has always meant automatic disqualification for the job. But that's no longer the case. And so what we did today is we made a move to treat marijuana, recreational use of marijuana, just like alcohol. The Michigan Civil Service Commission cast a unanimous vote to get rid of pre-employment marijuana drug testing for state jobs. It's a change that makes sense to Commission Chair Jace Bolger. That's why I drew the comparison of if somebody overindulges in alcohol on Friday night, they shouldn't do it. I don't think that they should be getting high on Friday night, but Monday morning uh, when they come to work, they're likely not on the influence of either, and so we're going to treat them the same. The commission's amendment also means those who were previously denied employment because of a failed test can reapply without any wait period. Although he voted for the change, Commissioner Jeff Steffel says it brings up valid concerns about employee performance. I don't care if someone uses marijuana. I don't care about many of the social issues out there, live and let live. I do care about performance of state government. And I would like us to continue testing for marijuana because in three or four years, if we find there's a problem, then maybe we can make changes. Pre-employment marijuana testing will still be necessary for some state jobs, including law enforcement, health care providers, and any employee operating heavy machinery. The Michigan Association of Governmental Employees says it agrees with the regulation change and believes it will help recruit more state workers. Meanwhile, the CDC says more Michigan teenagers are using marijuana. Data from the organization shows that more than one in three Michigan teens say that they have used marijuana. Even though it's legal in the state of Michigan, health officials say it's neither legal nor healthy for young people who get a hold of the drug. It has to be 21 and older in Michigan. The average age in Berrien County for the use of any substance starts at age 11. So we can no longer wait until high school to have these talks. According to a 2021 survey from the CDC, nearly 37% of Michigan high school seniors reported they'd use marijuana in their lifetime, and more than 22% reported using marijuana at least once in the past 30 days. A new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says cannabis-involved emergency department visits rose during the pandemic. Those visits went up especially for people under the age of 25. And for a deeper look into that new report, we're joined by the lead author, Dr. Doug Rayler. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, Doug. Great, thanks for having me, Tony. So your report finds that most of those emergency visits during the pandemic were among kids ages 15 to 24. 
Do you have a reason why that may be? I think there are three potential reasons. So first, we know pandemic-related stress. We know that the p- pandemic caused devastating consequences for all of our mental health, and kids are not immune to this. So one of the common re- uh, common responses to stress um, for many of us is substance use, especially those who are predisposed to a mental health disorder. We saw their substance use rates um, increase pretty dramatically. So the second reason that we think that emergency department visits rose among youth is for is because of the laws that have changed across the country. So in Ohio, for example, we know that um, uh, you guys now have um, um, a medical marijuana law, and, and your neighbors in, in Michigan and Illinois they have um, non-medical adult use laws. We know that as legalization increase, uh, consumption increases. So that increases access for those who are 21 and older, but subsequently um, uh, it's it's likely that substance use increases for cannabis among youth as well. Um, And then third, um, the concentration of THC, which is the active ingredient in in marijuana or cannabis, is increasing um, in product that's becoming available um, in the market and in the black market. So as uh, THC concentration increases, those who consume the product become become more intoxicated and um, they might become in, intoxicated to a point that might require an emergency department visit. I was thinking about this the other day. What happens if somebody gets a hold of a bag of gummies and doesn't know that they're gummies? Can you actually get like a cannabis poisoning, like an alcohol poisoning? What should you look out for? Uh, so you certainly can become, you certainly can overconsume cam- cannabis. I think the, the biggest danger is, is in terms of our youth. Um, uh, I'm not a medical professional, but by, by talking with pediatricians and emergency depart- department docs, uh, we know that this is, this is a common occurrence. Um, do you want me to start over? No, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you can start okay. right there, yeah. Yeah, sorry, my, my outlook. Um, we, uh, I'm not a medical prof- professional, but by talking with um, emergency department docs and pediatrician, we, p- pediatricians, we know that this is a pretty common occurrence. Um, parents will uh, come to the emergency department or they're called poison control centers, and they'll find that their, their child is acting differently. So they're either more tired or they're more agitated, and there's a bag of um, cannabis gummies that are pretty close to them. So the parents don't necessarily know how much they consumed. They don't know what the concentration of the product was. They just know that they got into it. And that can be a pretty scary thing, um, especially as a parent myself. I'm, I, I don't know what I would do if I was in that situation. Um, generally, the outcomes are, are relatively are relatively um, positive for these, these youth. But there was a case earlier this year where there was a, an, um, a youth who got into Delta-8 THC and ended up dying. So... Um, there's just still so much that we don't know, especially with these uh, these more novel cannabinoid products such as Delta 8 and Delta 10. Got to make sure you talk to your kids and have these conversations with them so they don't get into trouble. Thanks again, Dr. Doug Rayler, for joining us here from the CDC. Great. Thank you so much for having me. We want to get your opinion, so we ask, should recreational marijuana be legal in Ohio? That is our online poll. A whopping 81% say yes, while we have about 19% saying no. You can still vote. Go to our website, 13abc.com. And you can watch the full big story on our 13ABC News app. It's available as a free download in your app store.